This is a quick video to show how I use my vacuum pump setup for forming holsters. Uh, this bag here I've had for probably around four years, I'm just guessing. Um, I've done hundreds of orders, uh, probably at least four to five hundred items on this bag. And as you can see, it's got a lot of dye um, coloring on it that is soaked into the bag. This dye does not come off on the holster, so that's not something to worry about. Uh, I actually have already formed a holster tonight, and I was going to video it, but I took a photo instead of a video, so we missed that one. So now I get to use this holster, because it's the only other one that I'm ready to form tonight, and it has these tea nuts embedded in it, and these are quite sharp and can do a lot of damage to the bag if you're not careful. Uh, there's already some tiny, uh, you probably can't see it, but there's some tiny little punctures in this bag. It doesn't hold super tight vacuum, uh, but I don't think this setup, this pump, ever really held that tight of pump or vacuum. So anyways, I've already dampened the leather and I'll go ahead and stick my SIG 938 dummy into the leather. Actually, this one has a stitch sight channel, so I can take this off. Now this bag, when I'm forming, usually a couple times throughout the evening or whenever I'm forming, I will spray it down with a little bit of silicone spray. I'll just spray some on a applicator and just wipe down the area where I'll, I'll be doing my forming. Uh, so you can see better, I'm trying to use this spot here. I usually work closer to me. There's another spot off camera that you can't see right now that um, I work on too. So I've got the holster or the pistol inserted into the holster. So now I'll go ahead and stick it inside the bag. And usually I'll you can barely see it in the photo in the video, but I'll slide part of the holster or the the pistol grip up next to the platen I believe this is called so that air can continue to get drawn out of the area. Um, it's, I'm not going to be able to work at it at this angle and film it, so I'm just going to slide it up here and it'll still work fine. If you buy this setup, it'll come with these plastic uh, pieces to close your bag. Try not to push too hard right here.
So as you can see, this setup does not hold vacuum. You have to keep the pump running to keep the suction on the bag. Now I'll flip the holster over. And here's where we want to be careful. We don't want to push down on those T-nuts to push it through the bag. Not like it matters at this point with this bag. They're fairly expensive though, so I'm in no hurry to buy another one while this one still works fine. So we'll go ahead and just put a little more silicone on it just to break the friction. slab. So as you can see, it did a fairly good job of uh, putting detail on the holster. Some people may be perfectly fine with that and not want to go any further with it. Uh, this could be even too far for some people. Some people don't like any definition at all. It's really personal preference. So now most of the detail is there. I like to come back and rub over the flat spots to help define the flat areas. And then I'll cut in a little more detail, a little more defined lines.
I'm using my pear shader and coming in and cutting in the area around the trigger or the tr inside of the trigger guard. Leather's still a little damp because of my little recording snafu earlier. This is the second time that I wetted this leather. this area down to force the safety into the leather. That feels nice. And that's just about it. Now I'll go and put it in my oven to warm it up just a little bit and then let it dry overnight in front of a fan. This helps whether you're, you're trying to decide to get a vacuum pump or not. Some people like them, some people don't. Thanks for watching.